Do you understand that? Yes, I'm not an idiot. I didn't claim that. So don't accuse me of that. Um, what I'm saying is, is that we go into the exchanges. Our employees go into the exchanges. But the federal employees, the IRS, the EPA, NOAA, the Department of Ag, and all the employees that work in the executive branch, they do not go into the exchanges. But I do not know what my insurance is going to be, nor do you, because we know we can't keep our insurance policy that we have if we like it. I don't have that certainty. So the issue is, the issue is not whether I'm going into the exchanges or not, because I am. And the issue is not that the IRS is not going is going into the exchanges because they're not. The issue is that, that you brought up, and, and sir, I think you nodded to, is that that portion of 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 the, that the federal government will pay as a percentage of the premium. That's the issue. The issue is not us going into the exchanges. We are going into the exchanges. It's like seventy-five percent, right? That premium. Which is, which is equivalent to what businesses in this country pay today for their employees. Now, I know, I, I don't know what kind of health insurance program you have here at the college, or uh, do we? Blue Cross Blue Shield, may I inquire? Ballpark, the percentage of premiums that are paid by the college and by the individual. For the employee, we pay 100%. For the employee's family, they pay that. Okay, or spouse. and let me say this, let me say this, many businesses in this country, okay, especially the larger employers, many of those companies pay a, that pay, and I think mandated by state law, pay that's, and I think around 70%, some are more generous and pay the 100%, obviously like Chipola's doing, but you have the option to provide health insurance benefits for the family. So what, 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 what's, the, the challenge is, the challenge is, is that, the exchanges are not ready. The president has admitted the exchanges are not ready. Senator Baucus has claimed, as the designer of the health care bill, that it is a train wreck because the exchanges aren't ready. And by the way, because they're not ready, uh, and because Senator Baucus claims that it's a, a train wreck, he then announced a week later he was resigning. That's like the pilot of the plane hopping out the window with the only parachute and saying, oh, good luck, guys, landing this thing. That, so, so the issue is, and, and I believe strongly, strongly, that the president should, uh, in, in, in a couple weeks ago when he claimed to, to um, delay the, implement, the implementation of the health care bill uh, for one year, and that applies to corporations, that that should all if, if look if it's not ready for the corporations and their employees and their families it is not ready for the individuals of this company either of this country either so therefore the delay of one year should apply to the entire program and to all 308 million Americans that de that that depend upon health care so that's the issue and no, I agree. And, and let me say this. I don't want to be crystal clear because I've had, uh, you know, we get feedback on uh, into our office. Um, I've been there 30 months, 31 months. I didn't vote for the health care bill. I wasn't there. That happened in the 110th Congress. Uh, or, excuse me, the 111th Congress. And my first Congress was the 112th. So I haven't been there. Now, I have voted many times uh, to uh, repeal and there's several of those votes, okay, as many as people say, well, you're wasting time, you're wasting time. Of the nine votes to repeal portions of the health care bill, seven have been signed into law by the President of the United States. So it hasn't just been an action of futility. We have gone in and we have taken out things that aren't good. And, and, and so, so all of those, but, but I, I do not believe in the, in, in the bill. And so, but as it relates to employees and the IRS, and sir, I, I want to apologize, but I, I know that I never you know, question your ability to understand concepts. And so. Well, here's one. This is for Jackson County. Okay. We've had the water wars of the uh, 
between all the states. But this one is local here in Jackson County. <coughs> South of Florida and Company wants to take uh, a lot of water out of the ground in our county, and our farmers are concerned about competing for that. So the question at the end is, our local farmers may be forced to compete for water with a farm that raises fish. What, do, what how are we going to address that? Well, you know, if, if, if and, and as a clearly a local and a, and a state issue, you know, you, you've got to take in the, the, I would say, even though this is not a, not a federal issue, uh, I would say that you have to take into consideration the unintended consequences of, of what a single entity is doing. Uh, and, and you can't, just personally, um, you know, I have four children, and I can't, I can't say yes to one at the detriment of the other three. I mean, I, I know that's common sense. I, I, and I just, so I don't. What programs have we got coming? This is uh, Dale Miser. A program's coming to Jackson County for affordable housing. He's a, a man in our community who's concerned about that. Well, look, our economy, uh, and that's a bigger, that's a, that's a bigger issue. But a housing is, is involves a lot of our economy, especially in Florida. I mean, you're talking contracting. You're talking about materials, supplies. You're talking about framers, you're talking about brick masons, you're talking about painters, uh, you're talking about real estate agents, you're talking about surveyors, you're talking about financial institutions who actually do those loans. Um, I mean, so the, the, the uh, and so affordable housing, um, uh, and, and I'm assuming, did, who's, who asked the question? I want to make sure that, oh, okay, okay. I guess, I guess my, yes, sir. What is the question concerning that? USDA, we built 36 houses here. Not one house was lost uh, by foreclosure. Right. All owned by women built the square deck. Right. That was nearly $15 million or more available for those programs. Right. And they cut it down to two thirds. So it hurts the rural community where we have people living very bad. Right. Some even living in houses with no floor. Right. So that was a concern. That what was going to be your input is to make sure that these rural counties you represent? Sure. It, it would be like similar to, um, uh, I know the FHA, uh, they have qualifications of, uh, of financially, dis uh, financially distressed areas, okay, and that they can receive FHA lendings uh, programs to help in these economically um, stre stressed areas. So recently, uh, in the last Congress, uh, they made a different, they changed the designations of some of my communities in our district. And I travel through those areas. I know those areas. I know those areas have not had any industry. They've not had any plants coming. They've not had, in other words, there's been no economic boost to these areas. So we call the USDA. We asked them to come to our office to meet with us and we challenged their change of designation uh, for these two areas particularly uh, that, uh, that, were that were changed. And I'm pleased to report that they, we, we fought our argument in a very rational, very responsible way. We laid out the facts and they agreed. 